Hey guys, welcome to this video. Today we're going to be talking about the murder of David Grubbs whilst I do a painting of John Wick. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe down below for more. David Grubbs grew up in Ashland. He seemed to befriend everyone and is described as kind-hearted and goofy. He was the type of person that could easily cheer you up on a bad day, always making people laugh and smile. His friends considered him family and said he had a great passion for music. His friend Garrison Mao said, quote, Music is how we connected. Garrison was one of David's closest friends. They worked together at shop and cart grocery store. Garrison said, quote, He had the best sense of humour. David was our token funny guy. David was very well liked. His sister Sarah Grubbs told reporters her brother was witty, thoughtful and generous. One Christmas, he gave all the money he had to a homeless family. The sun was setting, David had finished his shift at Shop and Cart and began walking home on the Saturday of November 19th, 2011. He always took the same route home along the central Ashland bike path. This walk normally took David around 30 minutes, but unfortunately, David would never make it home. At about 5.35pm, a woman who had been riding her bike down that path called 911, reporting an unconscious male was lying on the path. Paramedics were immediately dispatched to the scene, where they quickly realised the situation was much more serious than they initially thought. David was not unconscious, he was dead. Chief O'Meara said he had it on the radio and said, quote, that doesn't sound right to me, let's go over there, because that sounds like something's going on. When officers arrived, it was pitch black. On top of that, it was raining. The paramedics said he was definitely dead and that it looked like a gunshot wound. But upon a look at David, he knew immediately there was no way that was a gunshot wound. It was clear David had been brutally attacked and detectives were immediately called to the scene. To help preserve the crime scene in the rain, Chief O'Meara bought three pop-up canopies and took David's phone to the High Tech Crimes Task Force that night so it could be dumped. David had suffered cuts to his head and neck, leaving him almost decapitated. It seemed to have been caused by a large blade, possibly a sword or machete, but it could have been anything really. David was defenseless, caught off guard. The community was so safe, nobody would or could have expected such a horrific thing to happen with no motive. David had no defense wounds on his body, leading detectives to believe he was attacked from behind and had no time to react. The community of Ashland was extremely anxious after David's murder. People were scared. His friends and family were devastated. Nobody could imagine such a terrible thing happening, especially to David. Garrison Mao said, quote, he did not have an enemy in this world. This was Ashland's first murder in more than seven years. As word spread of David's murder, friends began to gather on the bike path he had been attacked on and brought items that reminded them of David, creating a memorial for him. In a report by ABC News on November 12, 2022, they said, Chief O'Meara said, in the past 11 years, the Ashland Police Department has identified a man named Christian De Laurentiis as a person of interest in David's case. He said, quote, We know that he was living here at the time, and we know that he was a severe heroin addict. Though it is unknown if David even ever met De Laurentiis, and they are not able to move forward with him as a suspect as they do not have any direct evidence, only circumstantial. Christian De Laurentiis is currently serving a life sentence with possibility of parole for aggravated murder and first degree abuse of a corpse in an unrelated case. But unfortunately, as they cannot pursue any further, the case is at a halt unless new information comes to light. They have reached out to De Laurentiis, but he won't talk, so they cannot pursue any further. The killer left few clues behind making identifying them nearly impossible. No one came forward and the woman who initially made the 911 call said she saw a male leaving the area when she arrived, but didn't get a good enough look to provide a description. 
Garrison Mao is determined to keep David's case and memory alive. He and his mother plan to install a permanent memorial at the site of David's murder. They also set up a scholarship in David's name that raises money for other young musicians in Ashland. Garrison said, quote, I would like to ask the community to open their minds and open their hearts again, and realise that this is still very real for a lot of people, and get out of their own little bubble, pay attention to what's around us, because when we don't, this is what happens. Chief O'Meara is hopeful someday someone will come forward or give information to reveal what really happened to David Grubbs. His loved ones will never give up hope. They will one day obtain justice. Anyone with information is encouraged to contact Ashland Police Department at this number or the APD Anonymous Tip Line at this number.